planetary science missions. If you talk to an average person in the U.S. and say, how much, what fraction of the federal budget is NASA? People will say 10%. It's actually 0.4%, less than half a percent. About three quarters of what NASA does right now is uh, human spaceflight. So then within that is another line item for planetary science. And this is where the innovations are happening, driving rovers on Mars, getting a mission to the planet Mercury. Next summer, there'll be a spacecraft flying by Pluto, get pictures of Pluto for the first time. If we increase that budget just a little bit, it, we would innovate. We would come up with all kinds of new things. Everybody talks about the private companies. Everybody wants to work at SpaceX. And if I were a young engineer, I would too. I get you. Keep in mind, they just won a contract for $2 billion. Where did that come from? Magic land? No, those are tax dollars going to SpaceX and Boeing to make new rockets, which that's good. It sounds new and cool because the head of SpaceX, a guy named Elon Musk who invented PayPal, a total self-made guy, a South African native, came to the US to get rich this way. Way to go. But the money is tax money. Geosynchronous orbits where we have communication satellites, low Earth orbit where we have all sorts of weather satellites, climate monitoring satellites, communication satellites, a lot of military satellites. We all rely on global positioning systems. All that is funded originally by the government. All that, and that's not a bad thing, it's a thing. If we invest in missions, spacecraft, going farther and deeper into space, taking people, taking cameras, taking instruments farther and deeper in space, I claim you would have this intense optimism. You would have this, we're gonna do something cool together feeling. But if we have now a US Congress that is anti-science, which by reasonable accounting they are, or it is, uh, it's gonna be a long time before the trend reverses.